Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> Cheese Company, makers of Parquet Margin and a complete line of famous quality food products, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Kraft brings you the Great Gildersleeve every week at this time, written by John Whedon and Sam Moore, with music by Claude Sweeten. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. One of those Lent and Time foods we like to welcome back are hot cross buns. In our house, we take them hot out of the oven, and so as that white crisscross icing trickles over the golden brown crust, we like to break the buns open and spread on plenty of delicious parquet margarine. Oh, man, do they ever taste good spread with parquet. Yes, buns, biscuits, bread and rolls all taste extra good when you spread on parquet margarine. The flavor is so fresh, so delicate, so satisfying. And remember, parquet adds extra nourishment to your Lenten meals. Parquet is one of the finest of energy foods, and it's fortified by Kraft, you know, so that every pound contains 9,000 units of vitamin A. So buy Parquet, the nourishing spread that tastes so good. P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Yes, Kraft makes Parquet. Got to accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative. Well, Gildersleeve appears to be in fine spirits this morning and a pretty fair voice. What's come over him anyway? He's up before daylight in his bathroom shaving. Yes, believe it or not, the clock stands at 10 to 7. The mercury stands at 2 below zero. The coal bin stands three quarters empty and his bank account stands $11 overdrawn. What does he care? He got to ask. Accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative. Uncle Moore, Uncle Moore. Uh, come in, my dear. What's going on? Well, a delegation. Good morning, Marjorie. Good morning, Leroy. Good morning, one and all. Shh, you wake Aunt Hattie. Oop. What's got into you, Unc? You're not as gruesome as usual. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what is it? Step inside and close the door. Children? Yes? You got to accentuate... Oh, come on, Uncle. What is it? Children, your uncle is the bearer of glad tidings. What do you mean? Your Aunt Hattie, may her tribe increase, has decided that her mission here is accomplished. She's not going home. She's going home. <laughs> quiet, quiet. Let sleeping dogs lie. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have said that. That's no way to talk about Aunt Hattie. Don't ever let me hear you talk that way about Aunt Hattie, Leroy. No, sir. Very kind of your aunt to come here and look after you like this. That's no way to talk about her. Do you understand? What a character. You yeah. took the words right out of my mouth. When's she going, Uncle Mort? I don't know. In a few days. As soon as she can get a ticket. But we mustn't rush her, you understand? I don't want you to say anything about this. Not a word. Okay. Now, hand me that mug, will you, my dear? Where's my... Leroy, give me that brush. Can I mix up the lather, Unc? No, you may not. Why? Because I prefer to do it myself. You may go now, children. Oh, can't we stay and watch? Yeah, let us watch, Unc. What is there to watch? <laughs> you look so funny when you shave. You make such funny faces. Well, I have to make faces. Now, go on out. I can't shave with people watching me. Oh, please. Please, Unc. Well, you keep out of the way. Don't forget under your chin, Uncle Mort. Which chin? Yep. <laughs> Listen, you, I, I've been shaving myself for 30 years now, and I don't need any advice. Yeah? Who's there? It's me, Mr. Gilfrey's birdie. Uh, open the door, Leroy. I didn't want to disturb you. I just... <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? Ever seen a man shave before, Bertie? <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Gilfrey. I heard you stirring around up here, and I wondered how soon you wanted breakfast. I'll be ready in seven and one half minutes, Bertie. Yes, sir. How about her? Is she up yet? Miss Forrester. Bertie, she's leaving. Shh. Leaving? It's not so loud, Bertie. But it's true. Miss Forrester is leaving. Hallelujah. Maybe this is the turning point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that just goes to show, Mr. Kilsey, that shows the power of prayer. Well, you keep right on praying, Bertie. <laughs> 
But in the meantime, how about a little breakfast? Mr. Gillsleeve, it strikes me that this is the time for buckwheat cakes and sausages. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on out of here, you children. Let your uncle shave and you'll get dressed. Breakfast in ten minutes, you hear? Okay, Bertie. You got the accentuate the positive. That Mr. Gillsleeve. Eliminate the negative. Latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. <laughs> Well, sir, I'm stuffed, and I don't care who knows it. I'll have a couple more, Bertie, if you got them there. Leroy, how do you do it? I'm a growing boy. You're a bottomless pit. <laughs> Doorbell. Yeah, well, I'll go, Bertie. I'm nearly through. Don't be bashful, Bertie. Check them up. Morning, Gildy. Oh, you, Judge. Come on in. Thank you. Come on in. You're letting in the cold. It's frosty out. <laughs> Your nose looks like a tomato. Morning, Marjorie. Leroy. Morning, Judge. Leroy? Judge Hooker said good morning. Uh, good morning. Would you care for a cup of coffee, Judge? Warm you up. No, thank you, Bertie. One cup is my limit. I've already had two. Yeah. <laughs> Come on in the living room, Horace. Take off your earmuffs. Can't stay, Gildy. I gotta get down to the office. I just dropped in to get your proxy. My proxy? For what? For the meeting tonight, the Jolly Boys Social Club. We're holding an election of officers, and I knew you wouldn't be able to attend, so I thought I'd Now, just... wait a minute. What makes you think I won't be able to attend? Well, will you? Well, as a matter of fact, no, I don't think I can. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what's so funny? Oh, golly, Gilly, she certainly got you tied to her apron string. Oh, is that so? I'd come if I wanted to. Only I don't want to. Says you. Might interest you to know, you old goat, that Hattie is going home in a day or so. And being a gentleman... Says you. I'm too polite to leave her alone on the last night of her visit. Says you. Y listen, you old parrot, never mind the witty repartee. You haven't even been polite enough to meet her. If you were any kind of a friend, you'd help me out a little with her. And if you were any kind of a friend, you wouldn't ask it. What do you know about her? As much as I care to. <laughs> All right. I take it I have your proxy then to vote as I see fit tonight. You certainly have not. Oh, now, Gildy. I know you. You'd vote for yourself. I have no personal ambitions, Gildy. But if elected, I shall strive to serve to the best of my ability. Listen, who started that club? Now, surely you're not thinking of yourself for president. Well, I don't know why not. A man who can't even attend meetings. A man who's so tied down at home that Who's he... tied down? I tell oh, you... Martin. Yes, Hattie? I wonder if you'd bring up my eyeglasses. I left them downstairs last night when we were playing cribbage. Yes, Hattie. <laughs> All right, laugh, you old goat. <laughs> you just wait till you need a friend. <laughs> old goat. I start the club and he wants to run it. Why, George, if I could get down there tonight. Why don't you just go, Uncle Mort? What? Leave Aunt Hattie all alone? On her last night here? Oh, no, my dear. That wouldn't be very nice. If there's anything I hate, it's a schemer. She's, she's coming downstairs. Huh? I remember what I told you. No remarks about her leaving. And for goodness sake, be polite. But she'll think she's got to stay and start work on you all over again. Don't worry. You too, Marjorie. Yes, Uncle Mort. Yeah, well, good morning, Hattie. Good morning, Aunt Hattie. Good morning, Aunt Hattie. Good morning, everyone. Did you have a good night's sleep, Aunt Hattie? <coughs> Why, yes, Leroy, I, I did, thank you. That's good. I was afraid noisy children might wake you up, so I didn't let anybody play in the front yard. Well, that was very thoughtful, Leroy. Yeah, that's me. How are you feeling now, Aunt Hattie? Feeling? Why, why, I feel fine, Leroy. Why? That's good. Just wanted to know. Have you had breakfast, Aunt Hattie? Or could I get you some? Oh, Bertie brought my breakfast up to me on a tray. Thank you. Well, I hope it was satisfactory. Oh, yes. Uh, the egg was a little harder than I liked them. But then things can't be perfect. No reason why not. Yeah. Better speak to Bertie about that, Uncle Throckmorton. 
I, I don't usually approve of staying in bed for breakfast. But once in a great while, I like to pamper myself and rest up in the morning, especially before a long journey. Gone somewhere, Rat Hattie? Leroy? <laughs> yes, I, I'm afraid I have to, Leroy. I've got to be getting home. Oh, gee. Did you hear that, Marge? Aunt Hattie's gone home. Shucks. <laughs> Leroy. <laughs> I... I suppose I really ought to be doing something about getting train reservations, Throckmorton. Tra train? Well, must you go, Hattie? Yeah. Couldn't you stay another week, Auntie? Look, little Lord Fauntleroy. <laughs> Why don't you run along, you and your sister? Aunt Hattie and I have a few things to talk about. Come on, Leroy. We'll see you at lunch, Aunt Hattie. Yeah, see you at lunch. Uh, I get to sit next to Aunt Hattie, Marge. <laughs> You've certainly done wonders with those children, Hattie. I hope it lasts. Oh, oh, by the way, Throckmorton, uh, there's something I've had on my mind. Oh? What's that? It's about the children. Yes? Uh, have you ever considered what would happen to them in the event that you, um, uh, passed on? Passed on? <laughs> Died. I'm not going to die. <laughs> Yes, but if you did, you ought to consider that, you know. What provision is made for them in the event of your demise? D -d demise? Well, I don't remember exactly, Hattie. It's all in the thing there, the, whatchamacallit, the, you know, the legal papers. Well, I must say you don't seem very clear about it, but if you say it's taken care of... Wait a minute. Maybe you'd like to talk to Judge Hooker about this. Well, it's no business of mine. You're the children's guardian. No, but... I think you've got a very good point there, Hattie. The judge is a regular bear cat on all that legal stuff. Tell you what I'll do. I'll call him right up. Well, I didn't mean to... Oh, the judge would love to talk to you with about it. I'll ask him to come over this evening. Are you sure he wouldn't mind? Mind? He's been dying to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you'll be crazy about the judge. A wonderful fellow and a great mind. Yeah, the old schemer. If there's anything I hate, it's a schemer. Hello. Is judge Hooker there? Well, put him on, please. This is Mr. Gildersleeve. The judge just came into his office. Hello, Judge. Guilty. Uh, Judge, I wonder if you could come over to my house this evening on a matter of business. Yeah, it has to do with the estate. Miss Forrester would like to discuss... Now, wait a minute. I don't care what social engagements you have. Oh, if it's not convenient, tell him... This is business, Judge, and it's mighty important. Either you're the executor of this estate or you're not. Which is it? Well, you get over here, understand? Yeah. Is he coming? Oh, the judge says he'd be delighted. Why? Yes, sir, if there's anything I hate, it's a schemer. Yeah. <laughs> Greg Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. You know, those active youngsters of yours and the hard-working grown-ups, too, need plenty of good nourishing foods these strenuous days. So to help provide some of that vital energy your family needs, serve delicious, nourishing parquet margarine at every meal. Include parquet margarine in lunchbox sandwiches, too, because this spread that tastes so good is also one of America's best energy foods. What's more, parquet provides your family with some of that important vitamin A they need every day for good nutrition. Kraft, you see, fortifies every single pound of parquet with a guaranteed 9,000 units of vitamin A. So serve parquet often for its grand flavor goodness and also for the splendid nourishment it provides. When you buy margarine, insist on parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine, the Kraft quality spread for bread. Yes, Kraft makes parquet. <laughs> Now, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve, that crafty fellow. It's a little before 8 o'clock in the evening, and we find him with his hat and coat on, his hand on the knob of his front door, about to make what looks like a getaway. Uh, Hattie, you sure you don't mind my going out for a few minutes? Not at all, Dr. Martin. Uh, not if this meeting is as important as you say. Oh, are you uh, going to an important meeting, Uncle? Uh, very important. 
It's with the chief of police, Mr. Gates, and Mr. Munson, and, well, it's a little group of professional men. <laughs> Be careful of that cold, Leroy. <laughs> we wouldn't want Aunt Hattie to have to nurse you through a newness, would we? Oh, I'm all right, Unc, honest. Just watch it. Well, Hattie, you won't be alone. Judge Hooker will be arriving in a few minutes, and you'll be crazy about him. Oh, I'm sure he's very nice. Oh, he is. Well, I'll be going. Uh, Leroy, in case I don't get back before you're in bed, good night. <laughs> good night, Uncle Mort. See you later, Hattie. Oh, uh, one more thing. If you should finish up your legal business before I get back. Judge Hooker just loves cribbage. Well. Yeah. Goodbye now. Well, that's a catchy name of that. Well, you know, Chief, it's the song the burglar sang to the policeman. Don't fence me in. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> that opera singer sings it every week on the radio. Yeah, real pretty tune. Uh, you know the prisoner's song? Oh, if I had the wings of an angel. Oh, get your mind off of business, Chief. Oh. We're here to relax tonight. I'm relaxed. Who oh, I understand we're going to have an election of officers. Oh, the hooker speak to you, too? Oh, he said something about it. I think the old windbag wants to be the president. Well, why not? I think you'd make a pretty good president. Give the club a little dignity. Are you kidding? This club wouldn't have no dignity if Patrick Henry was the president. <laughs> Hello! Gildersleeve. Speaking of windbags. Are there any jolly boys up there? Are uh, there two here now, Commissioner? With him, that's three and a half. Well, well, good evening, jolly boys. <laughs> Remember me? Gildersleeve's the name. Uh, glad to see you, Commissioner. Have a chair, Commissioner. I thought your sister-in-law had you locked up for the night. What you do, shinny down the rain pipe? I simply announced I was going to a meeting, Floyd. I announced it in loud, clear tones. Yeah, I know them tones. Do you mind if I go to a meeting tonight, lovey-dovey? <laughs> 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 Well, I'm here anyway, fellas, and the judge is trapped for the evening. Oh, now, Gildersleeve, I don't know whether you should have done that or not. The judge has his heart set on this election. What do we want with a president anyway? Well, we should have a secretary, too. Get a secretary? He's got to write letters. All we want to do is play a little poker. Just the same. I say, Hooker, be a good president. Uh, tell me, Chief, what office did he promise you? The reason I mention it, he promised... Well, he said he'd make me sick. Why, that old double-crosser. The thing makes a man lose his faith in human nature. All are we sure Hooker is human? <laughs> right. Now, second the nomination. I third. Too bad, Peavy. You just missed the election. Again? Yeah, but you're just in time for a toast to the victorious candidate. Yes, yes, that's right. Everybody have a quick one, then we'll play some poker. Uh, open them up, Floyd. Coming up. Hey, our Commissioner. Oop. <laughs> this one's got a top on it. Chief. Thanks. And one for the peeve and one for me. Hey, they're nice and cold. Yes, I had them sitting out on the window sill all afternoon. <laughs> Gentlemen, a toast. Judge Hooker, the finest dog catcher this club ever had. Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I tell you, gents, here it is, almost 10 o'clock, and no hooker. Sitting there with that old battle axe. I bet he's fit to be tied. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you don't mind, Floyd, my sister-in-law is not a battle axe. No offense, Commissioner. She's a woman of character. That's what I said. And every inch a lady. Isn't that right, Peavy? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Peavy knows her. She's one of his best customers. Isn't she, Peavy? She's been a very good customer on your charge account. Yeah, well, that'll stop soon. She's leaving. Say, say, fellas, is this a lady's coffee clatch or the Jolly Boys? How, how about some poker? Yeah, yeah. How, what about a little card? Whenever you're ready, gents. Last round starts at 12 sharp. Uh, gentlemen, if I may, I, I'd like to propose another form of entertainment. Not poker? What's the matter with you, P.V.? Yeah, I, I'm a little tired of poker. He's off his stick. Don't pay any attention to him. Uh, P.V.'s all right. What's your proposal, Peavy? 
Well, how about some nice brain ticklers? They're a lot of fun and nobody gets hurt. Brain ticklers? Hmm. What do you mean, brain ticklers? Well, I'll give you an example. That's a good one. A uh, fellow comes home every day on the train. The train gets in at 5 o'clock. And every day his chauffeur meets the train to drive the fellow home. He must have money. He reaches home at, uh... Wish we could get him in our poker game. Stop interrupting me, Floyd, please. Yes, Floyd, stop interrupting. Thank you. The train arrives at 5, and the chauffeur gets him home at 6 every day. But one day... He must live quite a ways from the station. (laughs) He lives in a fashionable neighborhood, Floyd. Stop interrupting. Yes, stop interrupting. Now, go ahead, Phoebe. Thank you. Now... One day, the fellow takes an early train. He gets in at 4 o'clock instead of 5. So he decides to start walking home. Uh, Do you think this will ever replace poker, Commissioner? (laughs) Now, fellas, let's give him a chance. Uh, Is there much more of this, Peavy? Just a little. The fellow starts walking, and after a while, along comes his chauffeur on his way to meet the 5 o'clock train. So he picks him up and drives him home, and he gets home just at his regular time. Now... The question is, how long did the fellow walk? Isn't that a dinger? (laughs) Well, I'll let you boys figure it out while I have another coat. Yeah, give me one, too, will you, Floyd? Yeah, me too, Floyd. Say, how about a song? Yeah, let's have a song. Oh, I feel just like a song. Oh, fellows, aren't you going to solve the brain tickler? Oh, that. Well, I didn't really get all the details, Peavy. The way everybody kept interrupting. Yeah, I'll tell it to you again, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah. This fellow comes home on the train every day. Yes, Phoebe, have a Coke and quit worrying about that rich commuter. Thanks, boy. And his train gets in at 5 o'clock. Oh, then the chauffeur drives him home. Yeah, that's right. The chauffeur gets him home at 6 o'clock. But on this one particular day... Excuse me just a moment, Phoebe. Floyd, did you bring a new deck of cards tonight? Yes, sir. Got them right in my pocket. Fine. Sorry, Phoebe. Uh, the chauffeur drives to the station every day at 6 o'clock. You no, know, he gets home at 6 o'clock. Oh, I've got it. I know the answer. You can't know the answer. I haven't finished stating the problem. The man usually arrives at 5, but one day he arrives at 4. Oh, yes. Now, just a moment, Peavy, if you don't mind. Say, Floyd. On that day, he starts walking home. What is it, Commissioner? His chauffeur starts at the usual time. Hey, wait a minute, Peavy. Uh, Fix me up another coat, will you? You bet. Now, Peavy, Sorry. His chauffeur meets the man and drives him home. Put a piece of ice in it, Floyd. Okay. Well, Peavy, what about the brain tickling? Uh, go to grass. You can tickle your own brain. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's your coat, Commissioner. Oh, thanks, Floyd. Ah. By George, it's a shame poor old hooker has to miss all this fun. <laughs> the club doesn't seem the same without it. You're right, Commissioner. Doesn't seem fair for us to be having all this fun with him not here. I think we ought to drink a toast to the judge's empty chair. It's far from empty, Floyd. Mr. Gildersleeve is sitting in it. (laughs) Well, let's have the toast anyway. To absent friends. To To absent absent friends. friends. Ah, good old hooker. Got a heart as big as all outdoors. And just as cold. (laughs) Floyd, how can you speak that way of our dear absent friends? Just slipped out, Commissioner. I could have bit my tongue out as soon as I said it. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I yield to no man in my admiration of Judge Hooker. As a gentleman, as a scholar, as a poker player... He sings a pretty fair baritone, too, fellas. Sings like a nightingale. A tone-deaf nightingale. (laughs) Say, how about a little song as a tribute to the judge? Why, and for that, we could do his old favorite. Oh, promise me that one day when I... Oh, brother. Oh... I can't go on with it with him not here. Hey, how about the banks of the Wabash? He always loved that. Oh, Wabash it is. Come on, play it, Floyd. I'll just give us a chord. All right, here we go. Oh, the moonlight's fair tonight along the Wabash. From the fields there comes the breath of newborn hair. Through the sycamores, the
Let's do it again, huh? This one's really for Hooker. Oh, the moonlight! Yes! <laughs> George, it does a man good to get away from home once in a while. You know that, Peavy? Mm, I dare say. I dare say. Yeah. You want to get out oftener yourself, Peavy, you know it. You want to be like me. Hello, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> sure, look at yourself, Peavy. You go home every night, and what do you do? You read the paper, you listen to the radio a while, and then you go to bed. You're in a rut. Yeah, it's a pretty nice rut. <laughs> Not for me, boy. Say, isn't that Judge Hooker's car? No, I wouldn't know. Certainly it is. I'd know this fender anywhere. They must be having quite a legal discussion in there. Yeah, discussion nothing. If I know Hattie, she's hooked him into a cribbage game. <laughs> the judge will never forgive me for this, Peavy. Well, I guess I'll be going along. Good night, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good night, Peavy. Thanks for your company. The pleasure was mine. Yes, sir. He's still in here. <laughs> oh, promise me that one day you and I... Hooker! Well, I had no idea I'd find you still here. Oh, I've had a delightful evening, Gilda. Huh? And so have I, Throckmorton. And guess what? What, Hattie? The judge has been so charming, he's persuaded me to stay another few weeks. Huh? trouble. How do I do it? Well, so much for Gildersleeve. If you people don't mind, I'd like to talk for a minute about something more important. You know, there's a lot of money around these days. There's not much to spend it on. So it's a temptation to throw it away on stuff we don't really want. All I want to say is, don't. There's a man coming around to your house pretty soon with a better proposition. Most of us have someone pretty close to us in the war by now. The money we'd blow today without thinking could save his life tomorrow if we stop to think. Look at the men in uniform you see on the street these days. The men who are fighting this war for us. They're kids, most of them. A lot of them have never even been away from home before. And they're a long way from home now. They need more than just weapons and training and food. They need a little comfort now and then when it's possible. They need assurance that everything's being taken care of back home. They need diversion and rest from the strain of battle. They need care when they're wounded and blood when they've given theirs. All these things the Red Cross can give them. But it can give these things only if we give to the Red Cross. So when we're called upon, and it won't be long now, let's be ready. Not with an alibi, but with every cent we can scrape up. Show me any place where you can get more for your money. Good night, everybody. And think it over, will you? Broadcasting Company.